Hello, on this episode of Up to Spec with Seth, we're going to be employing the techniques that we have learned in the basic playlist and also in the advanced playlist. Do not be alarmed, however. Nothing that will be in this video is going to be brand new. Well, I sort of lied. The only thing that will be new to you is the kind of microphone that we'll be employing the techniques on. But everything that I will be sharing, whether it be the concepts, the ideas, the theories, or the techniques, they are all things that have been mentioned or have been covered in the previous videos. So let's talk about headsets. Headsets in general. Whether they're going to be $50 headsets or they're going to be $300 headsets like the DT290, which we have here in the studio, they will be fine-tuned for voice. They will typically not be the best for performance, such as singing, and they're not going to be things you'll see that will completely replace a broadcast dynamic. You will not see these in the radio unless it's going to be thrown on a guest, for instance, because it's a lot more easier to have a headphone and a microphone all in one. And that is the essence of a headset. It is used for ease of, ease of use. It's supposed to be designed in a way where it is going to be easily accessible, it's going to fit a majority of heads, and the microphone is going to be really good for a majority of sound signatures that people have in terms of their voice, whether that be high pitch, low pitch, or whatever. So I wanted to talk about that because we have here very familiar plugs. We have the quarter inch, which is very reminiscent of a headphone uh, plug. So this is going to be responsible for the sound that the headset will be replicating on the headphone department. And in terms of the microphone department, right up here, that's going to be taken care of by a XLR, which is going to be very reminiscent of any other kind of XLR plug that we have for our other XLR microphones, whether they be condensers, uh, ribbons, or dynamics. So I just need to plug this into an extension cable, and then I have to plug this into my interface, and I will be able to now monitor myself and also to get sound out of the microphone. Now, I'm going to be taking a look at the user manual. The user manual is important. Um, you can kind of skip this part if you want to, but it's important um, in the sense of trying to predict what may be coming out of the microphone, what truth the microphone has to offer for us as it records our beautiful voices. So let's take a look, and it looks like I found the microphone page, and it is in English, and it's going to be a frequency response curve that looks something like this. So as you can see, it's got a little hump all the way up over there at the, at the high end, and it also does have a little bit of a roll off at the base. So that's really all that we need to take away from this. Everything else, like the frequency response, the pattern, and the transducer type, I mean, maybe I lied. Maybe the, maybe the only two things that are important is just knowing the graph, the, the type of microphone, the dynamics, so we don't need phantom power. That's it. That's it. We can, we can throw this out now, or we can put this away with the bucks. We don't need it uh, anytime soon. So now that we have that information, we can now predict what the microphone will sound like. So I was always kind of saying how it's made for every voice. It's made for every head. And you can see that in the build. So when we look at a headset, it's not going to have very spectacular big cups that are deep and whatever, maybe maybe some do, but this one in particular is super basic. It's got a basic shape that's very reminiscent of some Sony headphones that were made back in the 80s. These will fit a majority of ears, whether they be big or small, they're going to be comfortable enough for when you're on air and trying to talk or listen to yourself or the host, trying to have that conversation. So they're going to be a very generic shape. They also will have a very generic gooseneck, which is somewhat adjustable, and it's just going to sit in front of the talent's mouth. That's that's basically all that that gooseneck's there for. And then besides that, the more top of the end, uh, or top of the line headsets will have a detachable cable that will allow you to replace it. And this is now where I start to mention more about the context. This is like a sports broadcast dynamic 
headset. It's not supposed to be something that will be used for, well, it's, it's going to be used for professional use, but it's not going to be something that will be as good as a dynamic microphone that is standalone, a standalone microphone. It's not going to sound as good as a standalone headphone. And again, for the reason that it's in its context designed for ease of use. These are supposed to be a portable headset. You'll have these long cables that will come to the chair that's like outside in the arena or something for uh, whether it be football or soccer. And you can throw these on the talents or on the hosts and you can put a windscreen on maybe. You can maybe change the pads if they want different kinds of pads. And uh, you give it to them, they adjust the head strap height, and that's it. They're, they're off to the races. The engineer's job now is to just equalize the sound and um, hope for the best. Everything else, though, is down to the talent, the positioning of the microphone, whether or not it's tilted or not. And also the way they speak, their plosive control, the wind speed, the, the way that the air leaves your mouth, if you can slow it down or if you really emphasize it, and also your volume. These are all things that are going to be controlled on our end. And typically, if we have a headset like this, we won't have access to equalization controls for that. This is going to be just for you to talk into and just to listen out of. So let's put these back on. And we're going to now switch over to the microphone. And we're going to employ every bad technique as much as possible for you to hear the difference starting off from the beginning. And I was talking into this microphone first, so that way you can have a very good baseline of how a standalone dynamic microphone kind of <sighs> squares up towards a headset dynamic microphone. So let's switch over. And now we have the dynamic microphone. We're actually going to switch the gain back to like where it was before. Now this is this is this is the yeah. You guys are not going to like this sound. <laughs> Let's just say that um, for a headset that is um, three times, maybe four times the price of a consumer uh, headset, it doesn't sound as good as you may have hoped. And the reason being is because of its context. This is supposed to be emphasizing the voice as much as possible. And what that means is we don't need to work as hard. We really don't. So we're going to be employing some of these microphone techniques. And the first thing we're going to do is the distance. And of course, on a headset, distance, distance, distance. Seth, how can we do that? Well, it's going to be super simple. It's going to be just moving the microphone element away. Um, as far as possible, while still trying to maintain the voice. And all we need to do is just bend it out a little bit, and we will get we'll get a thinner sound, but it's not going to be as jarring. And now on top of this, you can also notice that on the uh, meter, we have lowered in gain. We're not going to be peaking around negative 6 anymore because we've distanced ourselves. We can probably distance ourselves even more if we need to, and uh, that should be pretty good. Now, with that being said, we have employed a few other techniques without even knowing the angle of the microphone. It's not just straight. If this was the microphone here, we don't have the microphone straight like this. And we also don't have the microphone pointing straight down or straight up. We have it kind of at an angle like this. Go goes towards the nose and also the mouth. This can change the sound. And for me, I feel as though on this headset, that's going to be kind of detrimental. We do want it to be at this kind of angle uh, for it to work. Now, with that being said, we've lowered the gain significantly basically just off a distance. We're not going to be peaking at negative six, but we are going to be peaking with my excited voice, my regular voice. So let's lower down the gain, and we can lower down the gain by one notch on my amplifier, and it looks like it's just fine. That's all I need, is just one notch. So we've changed the gain. We've changed the distance. We have employed some microphone techniques, such as volume. We're controlling the volume. Now I have to be at this volume all the time for the levels to be proper. I'm also controlling my plosives at the same time, and I'm also keeping track of 
the angle of the microphone. These are all things that we have covered in previous videos, and we're employing them as we speak on a headset. The cool thing, though, is how distance is a variable that the headset seeks to remove completely out of your mind. You don't have to subconsciously think about how far am I from the microphone, because if I'm too far away, I will be quiet. I will not be loud enough. And that has happened even for me countless times. So whether or not you're experienced or inexperienced, distance is something that definitely bites you in the behind whenever you're trying to do a recording. You may not be close enough all the time, and uh, that does play a role in how loud you are. So what's beautiful is the headset seeks to remedy this by having the microphone always a consistent distance. So you can have those conversations with other people at the desk, whether it be Tom over here on my right or it be Sarah on my left. I'll be able to turn my head, I'll be able to have that conversation, and I will not be cut out. But now we're going to be looking at some other microphone technique, some technique on the engineering side. That's something that you probably never really considered. But production side is basically what engineers are doing, but live. So on my mixer board here, I have three knobs. One knob that controls the low end, one knob that controls the mid-range, and one knob that controls the highs. So what we're going to do is we're going to remember in our photographic memories how that graph looked like. And we're also going to remember how the 5B sounded like, the designated dynamic microphone, the standalone microphone. And we're going to give a listen to this. We're going to see how visually it, it, it feels as though the, the, the speaker is so close. It's a nasal forward quality. And on top of that, too, there's a thinning of the voice. It's not like there's no body, but there's just no bass. And on top of that, the S's, they may or may not be piercing, depending on the speaker. And that's all due to the way that that graph looked like. Because of the graph having that 5,000 hertz jump, that could be bad for some speakers where their S's may be sharp. So let's affect some of these frequencies. We, we don't have the control like we would uh, w using a equalization plugin or using the equalization that's available on Audacity or on your DAW. That can be Logic, that can be Ableton Live, it could be Pro Tools, etc. We only have three band EQs. So they're going to be affecting a variety of frequencies, but they're all labeled low, mid, high. And that's really all you really need to know. So let's employ some subtractive EQ. So we want the bass to be emphasized. What that means is we're going to have to remove some of the mids and the, and the highs. We leave the lows alone. <laughs> so let's do that. Let's remove some of the mids. And already that nasal forwardness is gone. If anything, I think I'm done. <laughs> That's probably all I needed to do. But if you're kind of scared of the S's being a little sharp, you can maybe get away with removing some of the highs. Just a tiny bit. Uh, the mids, uh, I don't want it to sound kind of muffled. So I'm actually going to leave the highs alone so that we have attenuation, which is typically where those T's, those S's are, those sharp uh, noises that come when we're using... English, uh, using those specific sounds in those English words. And we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to now just slowly but surely move the mids up and down, and we're going to just find what sounds comfortable where it has some of that body and meatiness of my nasal quality, but it's not going to be overbearing or jarring. And it looks like we found it. So all that we needed to do was remove some of the mids. So what have we done to this microphone? We've employed distance. We have microphone angle. We've changed the gain a little bit. We've also EQ'd the microphone. All we did was remove some of the mids. And I also did do a few other things. Again, we're controlling our plosives. So if I'm not doing it, plosives. There's a lot of plosives. It's not as noticeable because we fixed it with distance. How about our sharp S's? Well, we can fix that with EQ, but at the moment, we're going to be using that to combat the removal of the mids. And then also, we have also been trying to control our breaths plus our volume. 
we're speaking at the same constant volume as much as possible. So that way we're always going to be at that negative 18, if possible, averaging that volume. So that way we're always at the right level, just like everybody else would be in this scenario. And because I'm controlling my breaths, they're not going to be caught on the microphone as much. And if we need to, we can actually remove a little bit of the low end and maybe a little bit of the high end to kind of also combat that wind noise as well. So there you have it. This is employing the microphone techniques on a headset. We have not seen this headset ever before. And we were able to employ all these techniques just based off of two things. It was just context and then just a little bit of information, such as that frequency response and also what kind of microphone it is. And with those little tiny things, we can now employ everything that we've learned from the basic playlist and also the advanced playlist and make this sound a lot better. Now, this is the point of the video that you can stop watching. And this is where I start to mention a few things. This is more useful for those who are going to be purchasing a microphone possibly for home use. Um, and I just want to make that very clear again, that point in the beginning of the video, how when you are spending your money, the money that you will now be spending on, once you reach a specific threshold, which is going to be applied to any kind of microphone, whether it be a head-mounted microphone like it would be on a headset, or it be a standalone microphone like it be a condenser or a dynamic uh, like the 5B or the SM7B, they, the way that they sound is because of the money. And that's always how it is. That's always how it is. So if you're going to be purchasing a microphone that is $20, you're going to expect that it's going to sound like $20. But the thing is, there's another underlying factor that people forget, and that is going to be the time and the effort that you have to put in to make it sound good. So if something sounds cheap, you have to put a lot more time in in order for you to make it sound better. You can make $20 sound like 100 bucks. It's possible. And then, once you start to spend a lot more money, there's a lot less work that you need to do because what you're paying for is the sound. There's that darkness of the 7B that is very suitable for a majority of the voices out there. And that's what most radio stations are paying for. So whenever they have a new talent, they don't have to be switching microphones all the time. They can just give them the tried and true um, 7B. And it will most likely fit their voice or they'll be giving the very um, familiar sound of a RE20 or the Rode Broadcaster, like the, the microphone that we have at CGSW. So with that being said, once you start to reach that threshold uh, in price where it sounds kind of unreasonable, you are now paying for the kind of sound and color, the truth that the microphone is trying to portray. So. What about headsets? Why is it that this headset sounded so horrible? Well, again, that's down to that context. If the design of the headset in general, it doesn't matter if it was this headset or a Logitech headset, no matter what the brand, a headset's designed to just capture the voice and send it out. But the thing is that money thing still applies even to a headset. The more expensive, the more easier it is to EQ. We didn't really need to do much. We just need to remove some of the mids. Maybe we can add a little bit of them back in, but it's just really one dial that I need to change. The highs, maybe I touch them, maybe I don't. The lows, I don't need to touch them at all because of that low roll-off. How about for cheaper headsets? There might be a lot more that you need to EQ. There could be room noise that the microphone is picking up that is going to be detrimental to remove uh, in order for you to do a recording. And for conversation, it's good enough. It's going to be capturing those parts of the voice that is super duper important, such as, such as again, those, those high frequencies, those T's and those S's, those K's. What's interesting about those noises is that they help with attenuation. So with all that being said, the context and the microphone technique in the pricing, these all play a role in how a microphone sounds, and they all play a role in how you sound. So 
don't be overwhelmed with how expensive a microphone is. Be more in tune, more up to spec, understanding what is it that the microphone is capable of, and then start employing the techniques that I believe and I know you're capable of. So thanks for watching this video. There will be more to come, and I hope that I can also start getting some of those videos on the software end out, such as how to use Audacity and some of the ins and outs of using Ableton Live. So thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.